Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 9.11. And is my invasion of the Soviet Union just doomed to failure? Well, because I am going to miss, definitely, and I don't know that I ever really planned on having a May 1 deadline, but early May was my... Um, target date now i'm just seeing that it isn't going to re i mean it's possible to start oh it's for sure it's possible to start but don't really think i'm going to be in a place of being ready then i've um, been doing off camera work trying to get some of this stuff organized up better um but um still a lot of work to do still shifting of forces I mean, I could do the, the, the work, but some of the stuff is just, you know, like this. It's just getting, getting there, if you will. Getting to there, wherever there is. Okay, we've got these guys here. Good. Um, probably should see about a new... I don't know. Here's group caucuses. We'll probably see better switching commands, but let's... A lot to do but we're gonna get this moving here come up for the first of the month probably see a bunch of events on the second yes control of the Mediterranean for some reason it that doesn't seem to stay sort of registered in the yeah we're gonna create another commando unit those are on a cool down let me get so many and we need to, well, we need to move that to the top, but all right. Um, hmm. More naval forces would work. Okay, very low manpower. Um. Go with any of those. I'm just keeping these guys for later. But low manpower and useful. So maybe mid May or very early June. I think we're looking at. Actually, you know what? Also, the other thing here we need to do increase supply production considerably. I think we will because we will have other supply problems. We don't, and I don't need all those naval forces that I just. I really sort of want a bunch of the air power, but don't need all the naval, so we'll go down considerably here and up this by a lot. Supply, so we have a huge... Because what happens, or at least my understanding of happens, is that, oh, you need a bunch of supplies at province XYZ, you know, here. So it starts sending out a bunch of supplies out here, and then, like, um... They move to the units move to another location, and these they don't need them. So I think they start sending them back, and then sending out fresh supplies for other places or something. So it seems to have huge deficits of supplies lost in the system that we will regain at some point. Maybe it's some other mechanic that's going on. I don't know um, entirely, but they get temporary loss though you do lose it because I believe as they. The supplies move across provinces you're still getting the supply tax in both directions so um you do lose some but some of it's just sort of misplaced single engine airframe increases okay good grayed out um oh whatever what the hell we'll do that and united kingdom they've lost the nelson which i think we killed out here um 
more Canadian forces assemble in England report that more Canadian army formations are established in England to continue the fight. We will take care of them on the next battlefield. Okay, um, a couple of notes here. Um, while well, we have this stuff sort of forming up here, um, as you know, I didn't like the timing of this when we weren't at war with the Soviet Union um, and I don't like that this invasion happened to a neutral non-access partner member even though whether neutral or otherwise Spain got invaded now that did sort of for some reason cause the mother event that triggered um, Spain to join the Axis I don't quite know but so we have all these forces wandering around Spain, which are going to lose organization and then may, may end up losing manpower and be easy to defeat at some point. Now, they're all moving here because they thought they could move across my border here, just like and into this pocket like the um, uh, there's some British forces were moving around here that oh well, they may have made it there before we killed them. Or something I don't know, but um, around France. Don't like the way that happened either. That is clearly a bug. You don't want to have an invasion. I'm just um, and um, have it not work. Now, what had um, if Spain is in the war, declared war, the U.S. would be very willing, and or England would be very willing to invade Spain. I, I don't doubt that at all. We can look at the advisability particularly when we start looking at terrain here, um, getting across the Pyrenees, you know, it's all except for right at the coast is, is mountain and fairly mountainous in other places. So you might have a uh, situation in which um, you don't quite have an Italy where you can, um, see Italy is, is a great place to invade for a naval power because, um, oh, got a defensive line here. Well, just go around it. Got another one here. Just go around it. And it's narrow enough that um, you can land and quickly punch fairly deep and start cutting off forces where, say, landing here. What is this? Valencia? Um, yeah, lots of, yeah, Valencia. Um, doesn't really threaten uh, forces up here. Now, eventually, if there's, you can't contain it or throw it back or something, eventually, you know, if you're battling, if otherwise you're stuck down here, um, yeah, eventually you're going to turn the flank if you can't deal with this. But this isn't just some, shall we say, limited objective, you know, hold, oh, I don't know, four provinces deep and you've cut off, you know, one, two, three, four, and you've cut off supply to the enemy. No, you've got to hold off a lot more. So it has to be a full, maybe D-Day or um, Anvil. That was the invasion down here, um, landing. You know, full, large landing, not just, oh, we're, we're throwing in three or four divisions. Three or four divisions, if you have a reserve, is going to get its butt kicked and isn't going to, big enough reserve, and it isn't going to um, overly threaten uh, the overall front. Now, of course, we do have a bit of a narrow spot here, but again, if you can move supplies across this, and all you got to do is sort of hold the, the narrow bits here, you're doing okay. Um, so, and especially they're also more likely um, if the if Spain is at war, um, and the Mediterranean is a non-option, you know, coming in this side. Yes, um, whether down in Cadiz, down here, or up around this part yes Spain is definitely on on the option for invasion if it's neutral but in the axis and what is in the axis or not may be up to debate but if it's clearly in the axis and it's neutral and there isn't another and you know if the west wall is built and looks very formidable and you think there's you know there's no significant German occupation in Spain and you think the Spanish army is beatable in the initial, because um, the initial getting ashore and securing a supply line, which doesn't mean a wrecked harbor, it means like a functioning harbor. It doesn't mean a sort of temporary harbor, which one of the temporary harbors of um, D-Day got basically destroyed 
in a storm. The other one continued to function, I think more or less to the end of the campaign, but they kept capturing more harbors and putting them into fun uh, functional use. Now, the Germans were blowing up some of the critical, you know, cranes at the port to unload cargo and whatnot, destroying some of that before um, losing some of the ports, though, um, and it was and sinking ships in the middle of the port and things like that, making it difficult to put some of the ports back into action. And maybe none of them ever were fully up to design capacity because of the damage in the time of the war. But they were constantly adding more ports. If you can't um, add or get a hold of a good port coming into Spain, which this game does simulate fairly well, and say, I don't know, let's see how big this port is here. Um, Vigo, is that right? Okay, yeah, Vigo. You sort of know some of this, mostly from the Napoleonic War era, um, which you might want to check out in the Napoleon Total War series. Just a bit of a plug for that that I'm doing uh, currently as I'm making this. Um, I like that image. That's cool uh, for the um, port. Cool. Um, you're coming to a level one port, and, okay, let's just say you also sort of trigger a D-Day um, port improvement-like thing, so get that up to level 2 or even level 3. Well, how many, you know, mechanized forces are you going to be able to supply if whether it's you're not violating the Portuguese border or whether you are and you're able to contain this? Let's just say you're able to contain it by, well, if you can't get, you know, a feral. Yeah, now that's a much larger port. But let's say if you can sort of contain it into here, you're going to have a limited amount of um, supply you can put ashore, or the limited amount of, even though this has a moderate-sized airbase, limited amount of air supply you're going to do. And if you're not very near England, you're, you're running out of air combat range. Because it's one thing to escort in bombers into Berlin and back out, you know, once you get the long-range Mustang aircraft. And that's fine, because that's that one bombing mission. But daily, constantly maintaining air superior, superiority from Cornwall down to here, the flight times, just simply the flight times and the extra maintenance of the aircraft, the loss of, you know, okay, if you have damaged aircraft, they can just sort of land, you know, on the air base. And then if they're too damaged, just roll them off the air, you know, into the field nearby or something and just forget about the aircraft. So it's not like quite the, that they're all going to, you know, not make it back. Um, but, you know, constant air power, you're going to sort of have a carrier type situation. So this would be a limited invasion if you can't fight your way to more ports coming into other places. So Spain, you know, if you, you know, so you have a west wall situation here and you only get a small port. I don't know. Um, uh, San Malo here with level two and you're then contained here. Well, you know, you're just you're only going to be able to do so much. Um, because, you know, German forces and fortifications are great, but if you think you can come into Spain and capture a large group of ports and run around before the might of the Wehrmacht comes down onto you, you're established. And if you're established, you've got a big force, great. That's sort of the thinking that I would say that Spain would be on definitely on the table if they're in the war. If they're actually, let's, as they are now, a member of the Axis, then, yeah, because, you know, if it's just a pure fiction that, you know, you have the, you have the Blue Division fighting in the Soviet Union and other things, and you determine that, yeah, they're in the war, just not declared. We're not going to let that um, fictional pretense of neutrality uh, stop us yeah the u.s would invade but they were neither they were both um neutral and not in a faction when that invasion happened so that i totally disagree with um even if the mediterranean is closed because i think the u.s would just do a very strong moroccan invasion and secure the ports and fight in the desert um another note on this yes the canadian forces I remember it was at the dieppe invasion was very much a Canadian um, division operation. Now, that was meant not to be the invasion of, um, you know, northern France. It was meant to be a, a raid in force. And partially, I think, maybe to placate 
Soviets partially as a training testing you know how well can we invade successfully and partially a real we've got to increase the threats along the coastline for Germany to spread out its forces um, from other locations so yeah warning okay Spain joins the Axis is the TRE event that fires um, once Spain is in the Axis um, nationalist Francisco Franco in a pragmatic moves ex except ah, accepts a phalangist uh, Serrano Suner that's that guy we've seen him mentioned before his Minister of Foreign Affairs advice and joins the Axis Mussolini has been using his influence along with ours to encourage um, Spain to join the fight against the internet and against international communism and this will improve our relations with portugal and that's of course mussolini and franco as those two i'm sure you know and so um i looked at this and from various sources i don't know how accurate some of them are some of them are sort of family connections with people that i know that were at least briefly in um, cuba I say that because they were sort of at least a couple of different family groups um, that had left Spain, um, moved to Cuba, and then left Cuba um, once you, the you know the Cuban Revolution. Um, that were very much of the idea that Cuba was continuing, um, although wanting to be independent, but continuing good relations with um, nationalist Spain and Argentina and Uruguay as well. And of course, Portugal, now that um, we, Portugal wanted to stay out of the war, very much so. Um, uh, Salazar was an anti-Nazi. His Nuevo State um, was not, was, at most, was fascist light. And it's different than the Nuevo State of Brazil, which I understand to be a, a, the same name, but a different political party that was much more fascist. But, um, you know, there were elements of fascism in it. But, you know, if, say, you have a social security program, but all the rest of your society is entirely capitalistic, does that mean you're a socialist country? No. You know, so if you have some programs that might be described as fascistic, are you a fascist, you know, party? Or um, are you a more of a nationalist party? I I sort of put down... Um, uh, uh, Oh boy, um, I just said his name. Um, Salazar as much more of a nationalist than a fascist, um, and, and much more of a pragmatic uh, political party as opposed to the phalangist um, or the more hardcore idealistic um, fascist of Mussolini. Um, but and this is I also give you some of the background. I wanted to separate out because Franco's often called a fascist. Now, sometimes it's because it's the left that just, you know, you look at at least some of the stuff that I understand late Soviet propaganda was describing the fascistic America and fascistic West Germany and what we're sort of freedom and independence and, um, you know, capitalistic, not fascist. They just they describe everything that isn't them as fascist um, kind of thing. So he is... But also because fascists were on his side, Franco's often, and his name starts with an F, and is often, you know, called a fascist. But he really wasn't. He was a nationalist who had phalangists, including up to the rank of, I think, the highest UL ranking within the cabinet ministry, or cabinet, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was a, a phalangist. So phalangists had a very strong role in his government, no doubt, but he wasn't a member of the party, and he wasn't putting out, you know, he wasn't ha packing his cabinet with members of the party, I think it was just like two or three or something that cabinet members were fa phalangists. Phalangists aren't quite as, at least my understanding, as strong a fascistic movement as you know, fascists of Italy, but they were fascist of a, of a flavor, no doubt. Um, and um, Sunair definitely wanted to get into the war because he thought, one, Germany was going to win, and two, thought it was 
Good idea to get rid of the communist. Um, no, we don't need coal. We don't need metal. I mean, we'd rather, which we're getting rid of that. And fuel. Yeah, we don't need fuel right now. And it would have been better, of course, to pick the fuel first if you're going to do that. Okay, launch Operation Anthropoid. Operation Anthropoid was the British SOE's um, coordinated assassination oh, of um, SS Obergruppen Obergruppen Führer Reinhard Heydrich of 1942. Okay, well, a revolver held. If you're still watching this, and I'm presuming this is a revolver held event, um, I would appreciate this very much of you cutting this event because it conflicts um, very much with um, Third Reich events, okay? Um, what I have done with Third Reich events, and it, I have no plans on using him right now, but we can have, and he does, um, let's see if we can get both of them here at the same time. Okay, yes. You can have him in charge of intelligence, um, which is a better intelligence leader than, you know, for intelligence, land intel, naval, and political intel better than um, Reinhard ha or than Himmler, but um, he doesn't have the manpower um, boost and whatnot. And I think for some of the um, Black Ice ss events you need to have himmler in charge of the ss for them to happen i think i'm pretty sure it was at one time for some of the stuff i don't know if you still need to have so i say um but so if you didn't want um himmler for the negative ic's you could do reinhard heydrich now um you're making again revolver held you're making a very big assumption that um Reinhard Heydrich is in um, uh, uh, Czechoslovakia or in Bohemia, Moravia, or whatever you want to call it. I have earlier an event that um, allows you to send him or not to um, uh, to take over there, and. I'm I'm absolutely not sure quite quite honestly right now whether I sent him or not this playthrough, but I have a, a whole series of events that covers the assassination of him uh, that the player sees um, if he's there. Um, so I would really appreciate this being cut um, because it con it conflicts, and you have the option of deciding not to send him there. And keeping him in Berlin, which then you can't assassinate him because it was a Czechoslovakian operation, and um, uh, uh, okay, I'm. Uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to both keep this and um, end the episode here. I This may end up being a special, because I'm going to go back in and I'm going to cut this from, but I want to leave this here uh, as a reminder. Um, I'm going to go cut this event, because I don't want it happening to my game, just in case. Um, because I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I did, but I want mine to fire if, if, um, if it's set to fire or not. Um, so, yeah, this is, we're going to end the, um, end it here and replay this over. Um, so, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And, of course, I really love hearing from you. Um, questions, comments, suggestions, um, corrections. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.